Hey, search Now TV. 18 plus, new customers only. Month passes auto renew, terms apply. We've got great value at your local Super Value this week. Like Super Value Fresh Irish Fillet Steak from the Butcher Counter, half price. Super Value 7 Easy Peeler Net 750 gram, now 79 cent. And Dada Number 8 Chocolate, 10 euro. For cooking inspiration, check out supervalue.ie. Rest assured, at Super Value, we're there for you. Enjoy alcohol responsibly. A beautiful bouquet of flowers. It can say more than words ever could. To celebrate, congratulate, or just let someone know you're thinking of them. At flowers.ie, we know every bouquet is special. So every order we receive is hand-picked, arranged with care, and delivered with love across Ireland. We even send a video before it's delivered, so you know it's just right. Say it with flowers at www.flowers.ie. Rated five stars on Trustpilot. Harvey Norman is here to help, with all stores now open for home appliances and essential technology, like Office 365, ideal for any home office solution, and now called Microsoft 365. New name, new features, same price. Designed to help you achieve more with innovative office apps, intelligent cloud services, and world-class security. So organize your week better or bring your ideas to life with Microsoft 365. Shop online today or safely in store today at Harvey Norman, your technology specialists. Football on Off The Ball with Paddy Power. The greatest football partnership since Shearer and Owen. All right, you're welcome back. It is Thursday's Off The Ball. Nathan with you and... As always, at this time of the Thursday, we're joined by John Giles. Evening, John. Evening, Nathan. And once again, we're picking an all-time 11. We had a brilliant reaction to your all-time 11 last week, which was a rest-of-the-world selection of players you've played against, which was a, a quite remarkable lineup, a who's who of football of a 40-, 50-year period. And, uh, yeah, people love listening to it. Yeah. A lot of people as well wondering... I, I, I enjoyed it, too, good. going back to the old times, Nathan. Good, good, good. Good, 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 good bit of fun as well. A, a lot of people wondering just how good a night out that night in Argentina was. <laughs> well, I can't, I can't... Well, I tried to describe it last week. I still can't get over it, Nathan, because when you're playing in a match like that and, and you know you're up against it, it could have been anything, it could have been a cricket score, to get away with it... Uh, <laughs> That was the great result. It wasn't that we won. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, it was the I relief. played another match where we won matches, which was a great result. But this, I certainly had the most relief yeah, that's after the match on that particular result. Yeah. That's fair enough. Uh, so we're going to continue with this series of best 11s. And tonight we're going to talk England, uh, going all the way back to 1960. So this will include their World Cup winning side. And they've had many, many great players down through the years. So looking at the shortlist you've put together, John, it's a, a pretty difficult selection you've got ahead of you. Um, it is, Nathan. I mean, I suppose what that's what makes it a bit of fun. I mean, mm -hmm. all I'll say again, as I say, when we're at the start of these particular uh, all, uh, thing in the teams, is that there, be, there will be a lot of players, obviously, that people won't agree, agree with, uh, but also that I haven't picked any of the recent players because their careers are not finished, like Harry Kane, for example. So, again, in five years' time or six years' time, when these lads have finished their mm -hmm. career, like the ones I picked tonight... Uh, they could well come into the picture. So that's all I'm saying to the listeners, that I haven't picked the modern-day players because their careers are not finished. Nearly all the, Well, I think all the players that I picked here tonight, their careers are finished, some of them well finished. So that, that, that's uh, just to explain that, Nathan. All right, let's get into it then. What okay. we'll do is I, I, I have the short list that you've put together in front of you. It's pretty extensive, so I'll run through yeah. the players and then you can tell us who you've selected. So we'll start with the goalkeeper then. Yeah. The shortlist you put together, Ray Clements, Gordon Banks, Peter Shilton and David Seaman. Yes. I've gone for Gordon Banks, Nathan. The World Cup winner. The World Cup winner. Uh, not just that, he was a great goalkeeper. He had a great temperament, uh, well, like most of the other goalkeepers did. You know, to mm. be fair, I'm talking about Ray Clements and Peter Shilton and David. These were terrific goalkeepers. Uh, but I think Gordon was the first of the great goalkeepers, at that, English goalkeepers at that particular time. He did play in the World Cup. Uh, I played against him. We're almost the same age, I think. Although he's the late Gordon Banks. Uh, over the long period, say 10 years. And he was always, I met him off the pitch as well. Very, very calm lad, modest, uh, terrific goalkeeper. I think he set the standards for goalkeepers, for fitness and all that, at that particular period of time. Right. So, whereas previously, obviously, the goalkeeper was... <laughs> N not seen uh, as an outfield player and probably didn't need to be in quite the same shape as the outfield players. Um, well, well, there were there were lots of lads in good shape as well mm. before Gordon. Uh, before Gordon, but uh, I think as as time went by, 
the, the keepers got uh, fitter and fitter. And uh, Gordon, of course, Gordon played at a time when you could charge the goalkeepers, Nathan, don't forget. So you know, you could have, there was a lot of physical contact on the goalkeepers. There was no, no real protection for them. Uh, whereas now, if you if you sneeze at the goalkeeper, it's it's a free kick against. I think that has improved, but I think it was too uh, it was too physical in certain times. But they did have to put up with that at, at the time when Gordon Banks played. Because mm. he didn't look very slight. He didn't look like the most physical of players. Uh, well, he was. He was. He was. He was very fit. Uh, very fit lad. He did. Yeah. He, he he didn't look it, but he was exceptionally fit, mm. uh, Nathan. And as you know, he had a terrible. Uh, Terrible accident. He, he he lost an eye. Actually, I played against him, Nathan. After he, he played after that, he didn't play at the top level, but he he, he guested one match for St Patrick's Athletic against Shamrock Rovers mm-hmm. when I was playing in, in in Ireland. And I also I also played against him in America. So he continued to play, and actually played 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 really well in, in the two matches that I played against him. Yeah, played one game good. for Pat in what seventy seven. Yes. Yeah. And and as a personality, then as you you got to meet him a few times in and around matches, like you're talking about a a true legend of the English game, a World Cup winner, but also I think for so many people that save from Pele in 1970. Oh yeah, one of the best ever. Mm. Very very modest lads, like most of the, the, the great players uh, that I came across. Most of them and uh, Nathan, really modest, nice, very nice individual, really really good lad. Terry, Terry Conway has a lot to say. Terry played with him for years at uh, Stoke, mm. and uh, he, he he would tell you that you know he was a great trainer, uh, great pro, but it, but as an individual, like all, all those very very modest uh, individual, terrific lad. So in terms of formation, I mentioned earlier you're going to go with a three four three formation. So we'll have three centre halves, which means we won't have any right backs or left backs, but we will get to chat about some of them and who you might have picked if we you just, yeah. there were certain players you wanted to get in the team. So we're going to go with a three four three formation. So looking at some of the options you would have had among centre backs, centre halves over the last 50, 60 years, Tony Adams, Roy McFarland, Jack Charlton, Dave Watson, John Terry, Mark Wright, Gary Pallister, Colin Todd, Rio Ferdinand, Bobby Moore. Terry Butcher, Norman Hunter, Des Walker, Sol Campbell. It's quite a list to it's pick three list, from. Uh, Nathan. I'll have to tell the listeners, I was going with a 4-2-4, four, 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 a 4-3-3, four, three, three, and uh, you actually came up with a good idea, changed your name in my mind. If I'd gone with the original uh, 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 team that I was going to pick, I was going to leave out two of my favourite players. Mm. But with going with three at the back, it solved that problem for me, if, if you could call it a problem. <laughs> so I've gone with uh, John Terry, uh, Bobby Moore and Norman Hunter. It's not a bad back three. So I think the way you were going, you may well have ended up having to leave Norman Hunter out, but uh, you were very keen to get him in there, so you managed to find a way. Like John Terry, he was in your all-time Chelsea eleven, but again, like you look at that list of 15, 16 centre-halves I talked about, and like you have John Terry in there ahead of Jack Charlton. Like, I guess it shows just how highly you do rate John Terry amongst those modern centre halves. Oh, definitely. Uh, you know, John Terry, I think, was was a, a leader for Chelsea. Won a lot of trophies for them. Uh, never got carried away with himself. Did the job defensively. Could use the ball well as well, uh, Nathan. I mean, it's, it's it's difficult. I mean, I played with Big Jack for for what, 12, 11 years, I think. Uh, who was I think it was the best in the half in England for five of the, five of those particular seasons. Mm. Uh, but you know all the names in 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 there. You know, Roy McFarlane was a terrific player. Colin Todd was a player beside him for the old Derby Derby fans. Rio Ferdinand you know, with Manchester United. Terry Butcher. These these were all terrific players. Uh, but you know, I have to pick some of them and leave 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 most of them out. Uh, night and so uh, I know there'll be a lot of people listening in saying, "Well, though." No, he was my favourite, particularly lads who followed their certain teams. Mm. But, but, but as you say, what a terrific lot of players in that particular. And, and I haven't, and I haven't mentioned we haven't mentioned the, the fullbacks yet. Well, so talk before we get on to that. Talk about Bobby okay. Moore because I think obviously uh, we've spoken about Norman Hunter a lot in recent weeks. Yeah. Firstly, when he was in your Leeds eleven, and then obviously, sadly, when he passed away. So we paid. Uh, yeah. We've spoken a lot about his brilliance. Bobby Moore, we haven't spoken a lot about. Like, your career, your sort of 15 years in the first division of English football, very much the same time as his. So I presume you would have come up against them a lot. Oh, yeah. Well, over a good 10 years anyway, uh, mm. Nathan. We were about a similar age. Uh, and, uh, like, Bobby was... I think Bobby was one of the great defenders. He wasn't particularly quick, but as, uh, Frank... Bill Shankly had a saying for, you know, the great players, 
they have the first two y- yards in their head mm. and reading the game, as we talk about reading the game, and which is to, to see the danger before it actually happens. And Bobby Moore could do that, and he could do it well. And what I found about Bobby, we were playing with a West Ham team, were, they were always a pretty average team, Nathan. So when he had to step up, I think the bigger the game, particularly in, in, for England, in, well, it would be at England, playing at Wembley and that, say in the World Cup, which he did captain team, he got better and better for those particular matches than the week in, week out, week out matches. You know what I mean? On so the Saturday, he was a big Nathan. game player. Big game player. I mean, Norman Hunter himself used to say, like he played at the same time, obviously. And Norman said, I had no complaints about Bobby Moore in the team. He said he was he was a better international player than I was. And I think I said before, I would take Norman week in mm. and week out. Uh, but, but Bobby Moore, the bigger the matches, the better he played. I played against him for West Ham and he'd be, he'd play well, but there was no, they wouldn't have the drive in him that Norman would have for the matches. Because I think he knew there was no way they were going to win what was then the first division. But he'd play well just the same. But he wouldn't be, he wouldn't be driving them on. But when it came to the big, really big matches, he was outstanding. Great management then by Alf Ramsey, considering how, he, I think he described him as the heartbeat of his team, that even if it wasn't a week-in, week-out performance, that he was able to spot that come the big day that Bobby Moore would be the man you would want leading your side. Oh, yeah. Well, well every, I think everybody knew that from day one when he got into the team at West Ham. Was, was it obvious when you'd play against him that he was this giant leader? Um, well, I didn't play much for... I don't know if I played against him for England. I only played against, uh, against him for West Ham. And, like, West Ham at home were a very difficult team to beat. But, but when they moved up to Leeds, they went... Uh, at, you know, they used to leave a lot behind them, as they say, mm. Nathan. So he'd always play OK uh, at, at, at Leeds. Uh, but in the times that... Let me say 10 years, I don't remember them ever beating Leeds at Leeds. But he'd play OK. He'd play OK, but, but when it came to England and the big, really big match of the World Cup and that, then he was, he, was, he was better in those matches than he was in the league matches, in my opinion. So he rose to the occasion. Mm. And that's the complete opposite to certain players. That the, most of the players were good week in and week out till they came to playing for England. And uh, they couldn't handle it. But he could handle it easily. He's great temperament for it. Ramsey great. said... My captain, my leader, my right-hand man, he was the spirit and the heartbeat of that team. A cool, calculating footballer I could trust with my life. The supreme professional, the best I ever worked with. Without him, England wouldn't have won that World Cup. Yeah, well, you could say that about a lot of the team, Nathan, that, that, played, <laughs> that played in that man win that mm. team, you know, with, with Bobby Charlton, Nobby Styles' attitude uh, in the game. You know, they, they, they had a lot of leaders, uh, but they, they, they were a great, obviously a great team to go on and win the Cup like they did. But he was... Uh, he, he, he was he, he was class, you know. I describe Bobby Moore as class. You know, his control of the ball was good. His distribution was good. He never panicked. He was in the right position at the right time. Mm. So he was uh, he was one of the great defenders. Was he was he Beckenbauer esque? Would he get on the ball? Like could he have stepped into midfield? No, he, he wasn't quick, Nathan. Right. No, Beckenbauer was like lightning. Be- Beckenbauer would get in the middle of the pitch, and if you got too tight, he went past him. Bobby wouldn't get into those positions. He'd be too clever to get into a position where he'd be in any danger. He wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't a quick. He wasn't a fast player. He was a defender who read it well, could come into it and give it, give it easily, and he would give it easily. But could distribute the ball, long passes and that. He could do that with both feet. Your fullbacks then. Well, there's no fullbacks in this team, but the shortlist you had is when you were considering putting them in. I know you want to give them a mention, and there's some great names in there, like at right back. You'd Phil Neal, Chris Lawler, George Cohn, Paul Madeley, Phil Anderson, Paul Reaney. Left back, the likes of Ashley Cole, Terry Cooper, Ray Wilson, Kenny Sampson, Stuart Pearce. And I know at one stage you were thinking Brian Robson played at left back for you. If you were to go for two, if you were forced into a, a 4-4-2, out of those, who were the best right back and left backs for England? Well, I, I would have Paul Madeley at right back. Yep. And Stuart Pearce at left back. Right. Psycho. That yeah. was his name, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the nickname, yeah. <laughs> but he could play. He, he, he could get stuck in. There's no doubt about that. He could play. He was a great leader for Nuts Forest. Mm. Uh, but, he could, but he could play as well. And, of course, Paul Madeley... Uh, Paul was just one of the greats. He could play centre half. He could play midfield. He could play right back. I'd say right back was his best position. Uh, and I'm putting that, putting him ahead of uh, Paul Reaney. If I ever made him, I'd get into trouble with him <laughs> at that, in that position. But Paul was Paul was great. Yeah, I, I was surprised Gary Neville didn't even make her shortlist. Well, no, well he's on my shortlist. Was well, he? He's there. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. Yeah. I, I, I gave it to you. There. Maybe he didn't. No, I definitely put uh, Gary Neville 
on it. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put him in the same class as Paul Arena or some of the other players. But yeah. he was a good player. He was, he was a solid player for for Manchester United and uh, uh, and for England. So your back three then: Bobby Moore, John Terry, and Norman Hunter. Let's get yeah. into the midfield then. Uh, a four-man midfield, and you've divided them up into little groups. So we'll go through the groups, and you can tell us which one you've picked then. Yeah. Uh, first up, you have a group with Nobby Styles, Paul Gascoigne, Alan Ball, Paul Scholes, Colin Bell. Yeah, and I've gone for Paul Scholes in that group. Uh, right. Nathan. Gascoigne, well, you might have everybody asked about Gascoigne. Mm. I think Gascoigne was one of the most talented players out there. Right? But uh, unfortunately, he didn't have the temperament to really do it. You saw how his career ends mm. in, you know, in the cup final. He, he, he was a very funny lad in that, with all the lads in that. I think he was a very popular lad. He liked to drink, but, but he didn't dedicate himself to the game. Right? And when he got that bad knee, for example, I remember he was back home in Newcastle, uh, and he fell down the stairs coming out of a nightclub or something, you know. Mm. Where you know he just didn't. But he was he was a talented. Uh, he was really talented and brilliant to watch. But you know he didn't he didn't last for long as the, as as the great players do. Yeah. Whereas Paul Scholes, as we know, I've spoken about him so many times. Everybody knows what I'm going to say, uh, uh, so I won't say it. Uh, that you know was ultimate pro, ultimate player. Yeah, I don't think it could find two more different characters than Paul Gascoigne and Paul Scholes. No. The I'll tell you, I'll tell you a tale about Gascoigne. Well, I'll, I'll, a quick one. I'll try and make it quick. Yeah. I, I was. At, I don't think I've told it before. But I was at a do years ago where they had the hundred best players. or the big hundred best players, and it was it, it went on your initials. Right. So there was a queue to, to get in to, to to go on stage, and he was at he's G. I'm G. So we were we he was we were sitting to, standing together waiting to go on, and he was very very respectful to me. He was calling me Mr. Giles and that you know, and I said, How are you getting on, Paul? I said, uh, are you off the jar? He said, uh, yeah. He said, uh, he said, just have a few beers now and again. <laughs> I said, well, you're not really off it then, Paul. You know, he was quite good. But when when we finished the night, uh, and I was going up to bed, and uh, at the lift, you know, at the lift, the lift, the lift came down, and it was packed, crowd in it. Who's in the middle of it? Paul Gascoigne and all his pals, out of his head, totally out of his head. <laughs> Yeah. I didn't get a chance to say, well, you're not really off it then, Paul, you know. But he was... Uh, yeah, it's, but, a, it's a terrible shame when you, particularly now when you look back and the old games are being replayed a lot on television and you watch some of his performances during Italia 90 for England and also yeah. that sort of 18-month spell when he was at Tottenham as well, when they yeah. got to the cup final, he looked like a player who could dominate English football for the next 10 years. Yeah, he, 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 had, he had the skill... Uh, there's no doubt about that. He's one, he's one, he's one of the more, most gifted lads I've ever seen on the football as a midfield player. But 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 he, he couldn't handle it, you know. Mm. Like he, he he was like he was he, he was a very funny lad apparently. Whatever he was his life and soul at the party and uh, and but but a big kid at heart, you know. And uh, like he just didn't like all the great players look after themselves well. I mean, if you compare him say with Bobby Charlton, and there'd be chalk and cheese. And Bobby would have more ability than than Bosco, in yeah. my opinion. Uh, but you have to have the temperament for it and the head to head to do it. And unfortunately, unfortunately for his own sake, uh, he, he didn't have that, Nathan. You know. Uh, I don't know that you have a, a no family policy in this. Nobby Styles is obviously your brother-in-law. Was uh, as a player, how good was he? Nobby was a very, very good player. Probably underrated in many ways. He wouldn't be the most gifted lad, but but if you want attitude, mm. Nathan. He's your man, right? And uh, actually, but believe it or not, Bobby used to be scared of him, <laughs> right? Bobby, Bobby used to be scared of him, you know, because Nobby was so hard hearted and so honest, and when he played, you know, like there the was the, the, the joke about I'm trying to tell you, it's a bit rude about Nobby. Uh, it was when Bobby played with Bobby, and Bobby wasn't having one of his best games, you know. Yeah, and he lost the ball again. But Nobby, Nobby was the type of player get it, give it to Bobby, let Bobby get on with it, and. Uh, <laughs> Bobby wasn't have the best and gave the ball away again. He says, you've wasted more balls today than Marilyn Monroe, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> bit rude. I don't know if you meant to say that, John. <laughs> <laughs> and like, we'll get on to Bobby Charlton shortly and, and his genius. And, you know, you've spoken about him a lot over the oh, last yeah. few weeks. How so you yeah. sort of had to let Bobby Charlton do what he was. Like, would Nobby Styles be able to get at him during a game or would he be also, oh, yeah. Let's, oh, yeah. let's give Bobby the ball? Oh, oh yeah, Nobby would play professionally. Give, give the ball to Bobby, Bobby. 
Nobby loved him mm. uh, as a player. Nobby would get it and give it to him, all right, yeah. But he wouldn't. He'd, but, he, but if Bobby wasn't chasing back, wasn't doing some, oh, he'd be on his back straight away. On everybody's back. That's what was great about Nobby. He was total uh, competitor. Yeah. And honest as the day is long. But he wouldn't be big headed if Nobby won it and Bobby was two yards away from him. He'd say, "There you go, Bobby. On you go." No, he was. He was. Uh, he, he was. He could play at the back. Nobby read the game well. But but commitment. If you talk about commitment, you wouldn't get anybody better. Yeah. All right. So first into your midfield, Paul Scholes. Let's go through another one of the shortlist. Then you've got David Platt again. Like so much talent here. David Platt, Ray Wilkins, Glenn Hoddle, Johnny Haynes, Paul Ince. I think you mentioned Emily Hughes. Maybe could have even yeah. featured amongst the midfield as well. Yeah. Out of that list, who have you gone with? I've gone with Johnny Haynes. Right, the Fulham legend. The Fulham legend. A lot of people wouldn't remember him, Nathan, uh, but he was. He was hugely influential in the game. He was a terrific passer of the ball. He played for Fulham. In those days, you couldn't get away. He was captain of England. He got a very bad injury that virtually finished his career. He was in a car accident. Uh, but he was he was he was a brilliant player. Was he, he, was he a hero well. of yours? He's one of my heroes. He, he, he influenced me. I think well, not just me. I think he influenced an awful lot of players in his day. In, in, like I, I was, he was a bit older than me, but I came into the game uh, a bit behind him. But in my, when I came into it, you had the inside left, the inside right. You actually had left half and right half, but inside left, inside right. So when I was playing in those days, I was playing either inside left or inside right. And I went to a match at Main Road when they were playing Manchester City against Fulham. The great Johnny Haynes was playing. And what I noticed in playing, Nathan, if the left back had it, he was there to receive it. If the right back had it, he was there to receive it. In other words, he didn't play inside right or inside left. He went to wherever he could get the ball. Right. And I was hugely impressed with that. I thought, that's brilliant. I mean, what's the point of having a great player like Johnny Haynes waiting on the right side of the field if the ball's on the left of the stage to come to him? In other words, he could make the ball come to him, not wait for it to come to him. And I thought that was brilliant. Um, Actually, I started trying to do it myself. Right. And the next day, I heard Jimmy Jimmy Murphy who was a great football man talking at the practice ground, saying, "I watched Haynes last night." He said, and he was absolutely unbelievable. And, and Jimmy was a good judge, and I thought, "Well, I'm going to try and do that," which I did. I mean, most players tried to do it later on. Uh, I mean, I I I wasn't uh, experienced enough to be able to do it. I, that's why I had a nightmare in the semi final of the cup against. Uh, 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 Tottenham, and that was the beginning of the end of me at Manchester United when Matt, Com- Matt uh, Busby lost yeah. confidence in me. But I was trying to do it. But I was only 21 at the time, Nathan. Now I'm not bringing myself, but Haynes was brilliant at doing it, and it made sense to me, and it made sense with not a lot of players later on, because that's what happened. That you, you like the, 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 you weren't staying in the one position for the ball to come to you. You were making the ball come to you. And what was that inside right, inside left position? Where, where exactly were you expected to play, and what was your contribution to the team meant to be? Well, what, what would happen is you would, if you were inside right, you'd be obviously on the right hand side mm. of the field. And in those days, you had the, the big centre half to be played out. If it was coming on the right hand side, the centre centre forward, sorry, not the centre half, the centre forward, you would be on your way as the inside right. If it came on the left side, it would be the inside left to go. So you, you'd be working together. There wouldn't be it, like it, it, it changed then, Nathan, where you had one up front and the striker. Mm. In in my day, starting off, and Johnny Haynes' day, that wasn't the case. You had the, the left half, the right half, who would be playing left hand side, right, inside right, inside left. But the inside the inside forwards were prepared, were supposed to be doing getting back on the right hand side. But when it was a time to go forward and score goals, you were you were supposed to do that. But if you were an inside right, you had to wait till the ball come to you. If you were inside left, you were, had to wait till the ball came to you. When Johnny Keynes was a midfield player, and he decided, I'm not waiting right side or left, I'm going to get at the ball, whatever it is, and dictate the game from there. Johnny Haynes then, so yeah. for people you say, who mightn't remember him but would know the name. He was brilliant. He, played, was brilliant. he yeah. played for Fulham from 52 to 70, made nearly 600 appearances, you say, he had a, a bad yeah. injury at one stage. Uh, his nickname was the Maestro because he was so good with both feet, 56 appearances for England, captained them 22 times. Like When you talk about that game then in 1960 and him changing the way you looked at that position and maybe how football could be played he was obviously a bit of a trailblazer as well did you ever get the sense it was was that an individual thing that he had decided actually 
I'm too good to be waiting for somebody to give me the ball. I yeah. got to go and get it. Or did it, yeah. was it something his manager had encouraged? No, I think he did it himself, Nathan. He was the top man at, that, at Fulham at that particular stage. You know what I mean? He was mm. the star. He was the star player. He, he became the first hundred pound player. That was a big deal at the time. But that's by the way. But I think he had the authority to do it with the man. Obviously, I think it was the manager who probably loved him. Uh, but I think he was a big noise at, at Fulham who could afford, if 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 he wanted to do it, he would do it. And of course, when he was doing, he was doing it brilliantly, and he was helping to keep Fulham uh, in in the first division. Uh, but I don't think he was a he was a big headed guy in any way. I think he knew he knew his own mind. I think he knew how good he was. But I think he would have. Uh, I, I think if he was doing it, he would have had he would have had to have the say so the manager. Mm. Uh, but he was such an important and and uh, uh, influential player there that I think he probably could have said, look, this is what I think I should be doing. And, and of course, when he did it, he made uh, he kept Fulham in, in the first division for years. He was very successful yeah. doing it and went on to England and do it, did it there. So in modern day football, would he, have, would he just be a central midfielder? Yes. Yeah, but a dictator in the middle of the field. You know, you don't see him any mm. of them around now. Like we talk about Modric, think Modric is the best in the world at, at the moment. can get picked the ball. If you ever see Modric play, you can pick it on the left side, right side. So he, he, Keynes would be doing that now, or he did it then, but what Modric and, and, and Bobby Charlton did later on, uh, he was doing it at that particular time. He was the first one I saw doing it anyway. All right, so Johnny Haynes is in your midfield alongside Paul Scholes. Two more midfielders to select, three more forwards as well. John Giles, all-time England 11. We'll take a quick break, though. Football on Off The Ball With Paddy Power The greatest football partnership Since Jeff and Heskey On Alive and Kicking this weekend How you can run a half marathon With thousands but on your own Why your midlife is your heyday And where are we on a vaccine And why the weight is so important Alive and Kicking With Claire McKenna This Sunday from 9am On News Talk. Harvey Norman is here to help, with all stores now open for home appliances and essential technology, like Office 365, ideal for any home office solution, and now called Microsoft 365. New name, new features, same price. Designed to help you achieve more with innovative office apps, intelligent cloud services, and world-class security. So organize your week better or bring your ideas to life with Microsoft 365. Shop online today or safely in store today at Harvey Norman, your technology specialists. Shopping. It's a bit different these days. Here are some handy hints from Dunn Stores to help customers shop quicker and safer. Make a list before you go shopping so you can move quicker through the store and avoid browsing. If you are shopping for others, please ask us for help. To avoid queues, shop throughout the day and into the evening. We restock our shelves often, so no need to only shop early. Last but not least, always keep two metres between yourself and other shoppers. Dunn Stores, always here for our customers. At VHI, we're adapting to how we can be there when you need us. With a team of health and well-being experts you can access from home. Introducing Health Team Online and our new Health Squad. Health Team Online offers you access to a range of medical specialists who can give you one-to-one -one advice and treatment. And our Health Squad experts will provide you with a free lifestyle program covering everything from fitness to nutrition, sleep to financial matters, day-to-day -day well-being, all from your home. Health Team Online and Health Squad from VHI. When you need us, we're there. Terms and conditions apply. VHI Healthcare DAC trading as VHI Healthcare is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland and is tied to VHI Insurance DAC for health insurance in Ireland. Home. Sawale. We're at home a lot these days but we can still explore with the TG Cahar player. Explore the home of Irish content. Home to award-winning documentaries. Home to critically acclaimed series. Home to culture, trad music and sport. Explore Ireland from the comfort of your home. Explore the TG Cahar player app. Now available to download for free. Gachoid. Worldwide. TG Cahar. Suna Suala. From true crime believers to science and business achievers, sports, arts and comedy, to the latest entertainment wannabe. Get political, get healthy, get educated. Get all your favourite podcasts on Go Loud. Download the Go Loud app now or add us on your smart speaker. Go Loud, podcasts, radio and music to your ears. Football on Off The Ball With Paddy Power The greatest football partnership since Shearer and Owen 
You're welcome back. John Giles is picking his all-time England 11 this evening. So far, we have Gordon Banks in gold, a back three of three centre-halves of John Terry, Bobby Moore and Norman Hunter. It's a four-man midfield. We've picked two of them so far, Paul Scholes and Johnny Haynes. And John, we'll continue through this with another one of your midfield shortlists. Again, well, I think probably a straightforward decision, but some of the players missing out, incredible talent. Steven Gerrard, Chris Waddle, Frank Lampard, Bobby Charlton, Trevor Booking, Ian Callaghan. Who are you going yeah. with? Oh, anybody, <laughs> anybody's ever heard me speak not with your name then has to be Bobby Charlton poor old Stephen Gerrard once he knew he was in that shortlist he knew he wasn't getting selected <laughs> no, no well, well I'll talk about Gerrard I think and Lampard were two terrific, two terrific players mm. United but I, I never regarded them as midfield players I thought they were they were strikers both of them coming from midfield absolutely brilliant at what they did but they wouldn't they wouldn't dictate a game uh, because there's an old saying in football, you know, you have to have a beginning to have to, to, to get get to the end. Mm. Like they were always known, they were great at getting at the end of things, and and but they weren't good at initiating it. And I think that's why when they played for England, Lampard, and they weren't successful because you have to have a beginning to have an end. And uh, they they couldn't get the beginning between them. They could get the end, but if you don't have a beginning again, I'm repeating myself, you don't have an end. So they were hugely, hugely valuable players mm. at club level uh, where they scored spectacular goals. They were absolutely unbelievable between the two of them. But and I never really regarded them as midfield players in the Scholes way or the Bobby Charlton way or the Johnny Haynes way. So Bobby Charlton did that and scored goals. Well, that's what I was going to ask because you look at Bobby Charlton's goal-scoring record, so oh. almost 250 goals for Manchester United and obviously for decades he was England's all-time scorer yeah. with 49 goals. So. Yeah. If you hadn't seen much of Bobby Charlton, you would assume he was almost a Gerard Lampard type player. That he was always making those bursting runs from midfield. Yeah, no, he, Bobby could Bobby could just do it on his own. Then and he's the best player I ever played with, or the ever best player I play, ever played against. Wasn't the most enjoyable player to play with. Now I must say, hmm. uh, uh, because Bobby didn't. He wasn't a great thinker in the game, in my opinion. Uh, and I played with him for a couple of seasons in Manchester United. I was inside right. He was inside left, and. Uh, uh, I don't ever remember really having a discussion with him about football. Right. He just did it instinctively. How did he do it? He just I don't know how he did it. Well, I do. He was blessed in that he was quick, he had great control, he, he was he had a great shot in both feet and, and and have a go from goals from forty yards out with either foot. Uh, <laughs> it's no. not bad. It's not bad. Ah, could, well, so could could you learn could you learn much from him? I never I never really spoke to him about football, Nathan. Hmm. Never, and it was. He, I think he was a lad that played instinctively, totally instinctively. And I don't mean to be to be disrespectful to him. I don't think he had a great knowledge of the game. Yeah, you know, uh, like when I played with him, first of all, I was, again, when it was the old inside right, inside I was inside right, Bobby was inside left. And when I was at Old Trafford, first you were told uh, when it passes on, let it go simple, let it, let it go quick. Now I was in a position playing with Bobby, and uh, a good position, and. It, it should have gone, in my opinion, simple and quick. But nine times out of ten, you wouldn't get it, right? But just when you're about to say, for whoops sake, Bobby, he's gone past three or four players on his own, Nathan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And threatened to go for 40, 40 or 50. In other words, he could do it. On, he did Like when I played with Bremen, for example, at least, we needed each other to pass it to each other to go up around the box. Bobby didn't need anybody. <laughs> he just did it on his own. He was good dribble. He was quick. He was shot in both feet. Uh, but I never really spoke to him uh, about the game. Yeah. Your last midfielder then, uh, your shortlist was David Beckham, John Barnes, Brian Robson, Martin Peters, George Eastham. Who have you gone with? I've gone with Brian Robson. I know you were desperate to get him in the team. Yeah. One Brian way or Robson was terrific. I played with him at West Brom. Mm. When he was only a young fellow, only young fellow coming, coming into the team. I thought he was... His attitude was terrific on the pitch. And winning the ball, was, which was one of his great things, the only, he was one, it sounds very simple. The only thing he could see was the ball when he was challenging for it. Do you know what I mean? No matter what people threw their leg over or did this or throw a dummy on, he could just see the ball. He was, I think he was the best ball winner I ever played with. And actually, I think his best position actually was in the middle of the back four. I think he could have played there in his sleep. Right. But for winning the ball, uh, like when I was at West Brom, they were, they, we, we played in one match. I think we were playing Ipswich. We were going for the title, the top team. I think we beat him 4-0 at, at, uh, at uh, West Brom. And he scored three of the goals. He could score goals from 
midfield United and win the ball brilliantly. He was he was he was he was a terrific player, a we, really terrific player, brave. He didn't see any, never saw any danger. You know, got, that's why he got so many injuries mm. in many ways. Uh, like the ball in the air, and he could only see the ball when people were dribbling at the ball. He could only see the ball, and he was a great winner of the ball. You'd have him in your side any time. Him, 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 and and, and uh, Roy Keane in in that particular role. Yeah, brilliant, absolutely brilliant, great attitude. We better move on to your front three then yeah. before we run out of time. So okay. again, you have three short lists. First up, Jeff Hurst, Roger Hunt, Trevor Francis, Wayne Rooney, Robbie Fowler and Mick Jones. Who have you gone for? Uh, I've gone for Wayne Rooney. Jeff Hurst doesn't make it in. Was Jeff Hurst a great striker? Well, he was very good. Mm. I, don't think, I don't think he was a great striker. I think he was a terrific club player and... and he definitely got a break, uh, when, which, he, which he made the most of in the World Cup. Well, that's the, that's what I was thinking. Like you've Roger Hunt on that list at that time. Roger Hunt and Jimmy Greaves, I'd imagine, were probably the two star strikers. Yes. Yeah. Jeff Hurst is the one who lives on in legend. Yeah. Well, he, he did well. I mean, he got mm. into the World Cup team and, and scored goals. I felt sorry for Jimmy Greaves in many ways because Jimmy Greaves had a bit of an injury at the time, but England in the first couple of matches didn't play well, and when when the team wasn't playing well. Jimmy could appear to be out of it, which he was, and but he was only out of the like for two or three matches in a ten-year spell. He was back in the in the team again. But to be fair to Jeff Horst, he took his chance. He was a very very good player, very good player. He wouldn't mm. be in the same class overall as Jimmy Greaves, yeah. uh, in my opinion, Nathan. But but to be fair to him, he, he scored the goals in the World Cup when he came on. He was a very very good club player for West Ham. Actually, when I saw Jeff Horst playing first, it was in a, a tournament in Switzerland, a youth tournament. And and he played left half, right? Yeah, and he was converted to, and made and made a good job of it. He wasn't quick, chap, but his positional sense was good. He held the ball up well, scored his fair share of goals, uh, but but definitely got a got a good break and made the most for in, in the World Cup in in '66, where Greaves got injured and for, missed five, four or five matches in in the space of ten years. He was he was totally unlucky, but Jeff made the most. They made the most of it. So Wayne Rooney is in. I think we've spoken about him a bit when he didn't make the Manchester United eleven. Funnily enough, but uh, he is in this eleven. Your second shortlist then is Gary Lineker, Peter Beardsley, Kevin Keegan, Franny Lee, Peter Osgood, and Terry Payne. Yeah, I, I, I've gone for uh, Kevin Keegan. Right ahead of Lineker. Yes, ahead of most people. Okay, I think, I think Keegan was a great player, and I don't use the word great mm. easily, uh, Nathan. When he came from. He transformed Liverpool. Liverpool from uh, from 1966 didn't win another trophy until 1973. They bought they bought Kevin Keane from Scunthorpe, I think, and everybody looked at him for 35 grand. And that was at the end of uh, the 70, 72, 71 season. And he got in the in the team then, uh, and he was he was he was he was a star by Christmas of 72. He was unbelievable. He, he transformed Liverpool. He got back, Liverpool back. Liverpool didn't win a trophy for six seasons. He was a major force in getting Liverpool back in the winning ways. And what was it? What was it he did that got them back? Um, well, he was quick. He mm. was brave. And he had unbelievable confidence in himself. Nathan. Like, com far more confidence above his ability. Okay. Honest, honest as cocky? Today. Sorry? Was he cocky? Arrogant? No. No, no, he wasn't cocky, no. I think he was quite a modest lad in, in, right. in, in many ways. He just had his confidence on the pitch to do what... And, and honest as the day is long. I mean, if, if, if you look at his record, uh, at, I think it was six seasons at Liverpool. Mm. Now, they'd won nothing uh, for, for six years. And they won three leagues, two UEFA Cups, one FA Cup, and one European Cup with Liverpool. Keegan did. Yeah. And in 63 appearances, he scored 21 goals for England. Now, I think he's, he, he wouldn't be at the, 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 all the Liverpool's favourite man because he left them, Nathan. Well, that's it. He, he, you talk about his success at Liverpool. He left Liverpool and he went to Hamburg and became a two-time European yeah. footballer of the year. Yeah, I think, I think obviously the Liverpool supporters were very, very disappointed when he left. And, and obviously a great player took over from, uh, uh, with Kenny Dalglish. Yeah. But, but Keegan's contribution to Liverpool's football history is unbelievably good for them. He was a terrific player. Yeah. Nathan. We need to pick your final selection because we're very okay. short in time. So, Teddy Sheringham, Michael Owen, Alan Shearer, Jimmy Greaves or Alan Clark? Well, if anybody knows me, Jim Greaves. His, Greaves his third selection. 
Mm. He was in your Chelsea team and your Tottenham team. He'd be in any team. Mm. He'd be up there with, with Maradona and Puskas and Di Stefano and all these great yeah. stars, Messi, uh, Ronaldo. Uh, I so mean, there's a documentary out about him. And I'm, uh, and I'd, I'd recommend anybody to watch it yeah, to brilliant. see how this fellow scored the goals, uh, Nathan. He was unbelievable. He was be up she- there with the best. Was Shearer close? Um, not with, not to Greaves. Right. I think Shearer was a terrific player, uh, Nathan, and I don't want to be disrespectful to him, but I I think he should have he won a, a league medal with Blackburn, mm. and I think he had two opportunities to go to Manchester United, which he didn't take, and he went to Newcastle. Newcastle were never going to win the league, and that, and I think you know, his goal scoring record was great. But it's different scoring goals, Nathan, when you're at a team like Newcastle, in my opinion, where they're never going to go down in his time, and they weren't going to win it. I know they made a challenge for it, but they weren't going to be one of the winning teams. So there was less pressure attached to well, his if, goals. Yeah, if, yeah, yeah, like uh, Tony Curry was a terrific player for Sheffield United, for example. Mm. But when, when you've got uh, 12 matches to go in the league, Nathan, you're not going to go down, you're not going to go up. You can play exhibition stuff. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying Keegan... I thought Shearer was a terrific player, but I'd always be disappointed that he didn't challenge uh, the best, in my opinion, to go to Manchester United. And his goal-scoring record was terrific. But, you know, that 10 matches, I know myself when when playing for Leeds when we were neck and neck with Liverpool. Those last 10 matches, Nathan, the pressure's unbelievable. And you've got to do your stuff. You just have to do your stuff. But if you're in the middle of the table and you can get the ball and have a flick here and a flick there, I mean, there's a lot of players like that that was, you know, that that played in teams like that. Rodney Marsh, Frank. I don't want to, I don't want to be disrespectful to them. Uh, you know, do 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 a few tricks. Uh, the lad at Southampton. Uh, is, yeah. yeah, like these were all like entertainers, yeah. which is fair enough. I've no, I've nothing against that. But they weren't winning matches. If you're halfway up the table, Nathan, you're, you're missing that pressure, that real pressure that you, you have to do it under the most def, dif, difficult circumstances. You know, yeah. Rooney did it. Rooney did it at Manchester United for a long period. Mm. But I don't think he marched on. At one stage, I thought he was marching on to be a great player. I got that injury, I don't, and I don't think he was the same. He was still very good, very, very good. But I don't think he really marched on uh, to, 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 to hit the, hit the real really hit the top. Well, I don't want to be cruel to him. No, he's, he's made the team. Uh, we are out of time, unfortunately, John. I'll run through the okay. 11 then. Gordon Banks in goal. The back three is made up of John Terry, Norman Hunter and Bobby Moore. The four midfielders, Paul Scholes, Johnny Haynes, Bobby Charlton and Brian Robson. And then a front three of Wayne Rooney, Kevin Keegan and Jimmy Greaves. That is John Giles' all-time England 11. John, great stuff. Mind Thanks, yourself. Nathan. We'll talk to you next Thursday. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Quick break and John Muldoon's up next. Football on Off The Ball. With Paddy Power, the greatest football partnership since Jeff and Heskey. News Talk is now available on your smart speaker. Alexa, play News Talk. You asked, we listened. And now you can listen to three new Go Loud stations. Go Loud Country, walk the line between the biggest country hits and throwbacks. Go Loud 70s, a boogie wonderland of hits from glam rock to new wave. And Go Loud Soul, reaching